welcome friends let's start our course so we will start with introduction of cable sizing first so the question is whenever you want to connect an electrical appliance or you want to connect a load uh, to a specific source uh, first question that will be asked is what the cable size is, should be so cable size is the first question and uh, there are a lot of factors that we need to understand uh, while deciding the cable size like uh, how much is a current carrying capacity how much is a uh, load current uh, that we need to connect what is the short circuit level of the specific system and what are the permissible voltage drops that are need to be considered so these all things we need to consider and uh, also the insulation level uh, because if you want to select a cable you have to have a specific insulation level and this, so these all factors that we need to uh, understand so uh, b before starting my course I would like to give some basic concepts of terminologies that I will be using uh, in my training so let's start with the first terminology that is current, current continuous current carrying capacity so for example first of all what is the unit for continuous current carrying capacity uh, what do you think when we we talk about this item uh, the unit for continuous current carrying capacity is it is measured in ampacity just like we are measuring uh, resistance in ohms in the same way uh, we are measuring that how much current uh, conductor is suitable to pass the current so the unit for measurement is uh, chosen as an, an ampacity and it's uh, normally shown like by amperes so ampacity is basically a kind of property and that is measured in amperes so uh, what is the continuous current current capacity means for example if you buy a cable which can uh, which has a written that it uh, has a 2 ampere rating so what does it mean so simple answer is that uh, that uh, each first of all each uh, equipment or each cable or each electrical item is designed on a specific temperature uh, for example if the equipment is designed at 40 degrees centigrade so it means that uh, when uh, current uh, start passing through the conductor because uh, each conductor will be used in specific environment for example if you are using a conductor in a uh, very hot area uh, where for example you are using in a desert uh, uh, Arvian desert where temperatures already uh, rise to 48 degrees centigrade in summer can it can go up so the base temperature that you have to now design uh, will be that conductor in the start at, at 50 degree centigrade means conductor is already heated up at 50 degree centigrade and uh, then you have to design now if you pass the current through it then 50 degree is already uh, uh, heated temperature is a conductor is there so if you pass the current then it will obviously go further up so now you can get the idea and this base uh, temperature that we are discussing now for example is uh, called as an ambient temperature uh, for which an equipment is designed and for example if you pass a current and how the current carrying capacity is really working if a uh, certain amount of current is passed through the conductor then the conductor will start heating up so and manufacturer is giving also the temperature which is maximum allowable uh, temperature of the conductor okay would depend upon the thermal capacity of the conductor so at this temperature it means the conductor can flow the current without getting damage or without getting melted or without getting de-shaped easily and the insulation also on the conductor will not damage so the cable has now two parameters that we have to consider then the current is passing through it the uh, conductor itself should not melt and also the insulation should not get damaged because of temperature rise so now we see that the temperature rise in the conductor is basically a limiting factor for the 
uh, for any conductor because it will limit the current carrying capacity in how much heat will produced how much heat will produced in uh, we'll go to our smooth pro so let's go so it mean here how much heat will produce so heat uh, uh, will produce in shape of uh, uh, the losses will be in shape of heat and the formula for the heat is i it will be kind of i square r so losses will be in shape of heat and it will be watts will be i square r losses so if for example uh, the relationship here will be if the resistance of any wire increases if r is increasing in that case the w the losses in watts will also increase so and another relationship is between the conductor resistance for example now this is the conductor if we take this example as a conductor so here you can see that this is uh, the cross section area we have so let's choose the co color here now different so this is the cross section area okay and if the cross section area increases the resistance will decrease so if area increasing if area is increasing in that case the resistance will decrease and it's vice versa it means if area increase resistance will decrease and when the area is decrease the resistance will increase so if you want to reduce the heating effect of the conductor for example now you you have a point that not only losses but also heating effect the cable will start getting heat up for example if you find in your house or in electric appliances the cable start heating up it clearly mean that the capacity of the cable is finished now and it's getting start extra heating up you need to check your uh, electric appliance that what's the issue behind or maybe you choose the if you install the cable first time you will choose the cable wrong so this is basically the concept of uh, uh resistance uh, area and the current so um uh, another concept that i told you is for example now if uh, in the start of the if we, if this uh, uh, conductor or cable is installed uh, in very hot area the starting temperature might be like 40 degrees centigrade so 40 degrees centigrade will be the starting temperature and the conductor is already heated up to 40 degrees centigrade that's our consideration so we are calling it as an ambient temperature so now designer has to has to make now the conductor and assume that conductor is already heated up at 40 degrees centigrade now uh, for example in uh, in the areas where you're designing mb taking, taking ambient temperature 40 degrees centigrade and another area for example this one is in uh, uh uae uh, in so, uh, in arab countries if for example we take ambient at 40 and if you if the designer is designing another uh, uh conductor in 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 tar kitika okay in tar kitika so where he take ambient as minus okay 30 degree centigrade and if it is designing uh that it is a cable for 2 amperes or for example 20 amperes believe it or not the conductor size in antarctica will be small as compared to the conductor size in saudi arabia or arab countries so because you are designing here a cable at ambient temperature of 40 degree centigrade and here you are designing a cable at ambient temperature of minus 30 degree centigrade and 
for example allowable potential rise by the manufacturer here is 40 degree centigrade or you can say 70 degree centigrade allowable temperature rise so here in in case of Arab it has a margin of only 30 degrees because cable is already 30 degree heated up whereas in Antarctica the margin is going up to 100 degree centigrade so with the same cable rating current rating the conductor size in Antarctica will be small and in our countries it will be a large size a bigger size so this was the example that i found it very interesting to share with you that how things are working so continuous rating is in the in this case is the current a conductor this is a conductor it can carry without getting heat up above allowable maximum permissible voltage rise so that will be always will be should always will be greater than the um, should be greater than the ambient so this is little introduction and that will increase your concept about how the cables designing is working and how much it is really interesting okay now how we'll go to the how to calculate continuous current capacity for any electrical item so um, uh, now for example that we will uh, discuss that how this to calculate a rating of current that is required for any electrical item so let's uh, select an, uh, any device so we will for example we have a bulb here we will select an electrical bulb and rating of bulb, bulb is 100 watts we have 100 watts of electrical light so how to calculate that how much will be the requirement for for the current how much will be the load so the supply voltage here in this case we select as uh, 220 single phase to 20 volts so you just you have to um, use the same formula that current or the load required will be uh, P divided by V. So in this case it is a single phase so it will be like 100 divided by 220. So you will see that how much will be the continuous rating conductor that we will be needing minimum requirement it will be kind of 100 divided by 220 so the current required in this case will be for this specific device will be 0.45 ampere so this will be the current rating this is the minimum requirement of the cable as per the current so we will we can uh, take a safety margin and we can select here like we take this load as point uh, 5 ampere okay so this is how you calculate the mm, basically different uh, values uh, of uh, different equipments in, available in your houses then you can uh, check what is the voltage uh, written uh, on the nameplate and the supply voltages you must know for your system so based on using this formula you can calculate uh, the how much ampere required for a specific device then we will uh, uh, I will discuss with you short circuit capacity so basically uh, one item that we have discussed now that uh, how basically uh, what is the current uh, continuous current carrying capacity or, or and, and how it impacts the uh, selection for the cable the next item is short circuit capacity so short circuit capacity uh, what is the short circuit capacity so let me let us uh, discuss this So short circuit capacity is for example uh, uh, low uh, voltage supplied through a source for example in case our case in distribution systems 
it is supplied by a transformer so we will let us consider a transformer and in this transformer uh, then there is for example a load we have load here and voltage here is for example single phase 220 and this is for load is for example here is uh, 22 ohms this is just I want to keep the thing simple the current here will be by ohms law let's calculate current will be I will be equal to V over R so 220 divided by 22 it will be like uh, 10 ampere so 10 ampere is the current it means the continuous rating for the cable that required here is 10 ampere but uh, how to what, what's meaning of short circuit capacity so we have to understand now for example if there is a fault on the cable and it's solidly grounded with ground or with a neutral point this is a phase this cable is kind of phase P and this is neutral if the cable is grounded and neutral is for example is grounded here if the cable is grounded then this resistance will bypass and the question is in that case how much will be the current the resistance is now too much decreased now from 22 ohms to a very small value so um, in the later section I will show you the calculations and how to calculate it uh, in detail but here now there's another thing that we need to consider for example if this uh, cable uh, it can carry the 10 ampere but the, the another rating for the cable must be that must consider short circuit rating of the system all the systems in the distribution systems uh, systems in any country they are defining a short circuit level for example it could be at low level 2 kilo ampere it could be 4 kilo amperes uh, distribution networks are defining this short circuit level so if there is a short circuit there will be a current and I will show you in a, in a calculations so that how uh, you have to calculate this for example and then it means that each conductor has a rating like continuous rating 2 ampere for example and then also it has a short circuit rating like uh, 2 kilo ampere for example but this short circuit rating is always defined in seconds so uh, depending upon the network you can have short circuit rating for one second for example it could be two seconds for example so each network has uh, short circuits and, uh, basically different values and if you see the single line diagram okay if you see uh, this is I'm showing an example this is the single line diagram for a 132 kV uh, substation and if you uh, zoom this is black color dark line is the bus bar for the substation which is feeding the power power is coming in and out to this common bus here you can see the rating of the bus bar 132 kV is the voltage level 2500 ampere here is example of continuous rating for the uh, the bus bar bus bar will not get heat up beyond the available limit if this temperature is uh, if this current is passing through continuously and here you can see this uh, short circuit rating is also mentioned here and that is 40 kilo ampere for 3 seconds so the concept here is if you want to increase the number of settings uh, uh, for each second uh, e each one second you need to increase double the size of conductor so if you are interested to get the training related to 132 kV uh, how single line if you are more interested I have a separate training for this and you can enroll in this training and you can get all this if you are interested how the substation single line uh, is uh, 
uh, is working you can even download this single line in my another training and but uh, here and, and another I have another training where you can decide uh, when you have to uh, how you have to make to the calculation for the earthing system and in the earthing system I have shown this how this uh, second uh, there is a formula by which you can increase and decrease the conductor size and this uh, three seconds is really uh, effective and it's really working and if, if uh, and if you are more interested you can go to, through my that training so uh, you have a separate training for the substation uh, single line diagram and earthing and, and complete substations so I really suggest for, for you to go for these trainings if you are interested in this so this is an example of uh, uh, how conductor and, and, and the short circuit uh, level is defined so another thing is uh, if uh, how for example another example i will tell you about the short circuit level is that uh, in 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 the 132 kv or high voltage levels all the sources are connected in basically parallel together so i will show you how for example uh, this is a system where we have one generator connected at one place we have another generator connected uh, which is uh, for example it is uh, 100 uh, megawatt and this is also 100 megawatts so it is supplying and both are connected through a network okay this is the breaker and they are both feeding the bus and it's, then it's feeding the load at the end so for example in the start of the substation the load was less and they have only two generators so one generator and it's uh, for example if there is a solid ground fault or it's kind of uh, three phase fault so just for our information that three phase fault is uh, basically uh, the fault which has more it will have more current and single phase ground will have a less current so if there is a one generator the fault level will be less if there is another generator added now this generator will also feed the fault and the fault level will increase so if we are keep on increasing the generators if we are increasing the generators the fault level also will increase so for example if any in, in any city before the load demand was less and they have installed less number of generators so the fault level will be low and if they increase the generator then the fault level will also increase so this is very interesting and for example if uh, uh, this is a small town and they want to connect to a national grid this station has a for this uh, small town has fault level of for example 10 kilo ampere because only three sources are connected so and if they connect with a network here very huge network and this network has a fault level of for example 40 kilo ampere okay so in that case if you connect this one then the fault level of this town will also has to we has to increase the this fault level by 40 minimum 40 40 and 10 it will go beyond for example like 41 kilo ampere or something the fault level will increase so the fault level of the new system will be certainly higher there will be calculations the fault level will be certainly higher than 10 kilo amperes uh, higher than and it will be higher than 40 kilo amperes so new fault level will be for example like 50 kilo amperes in this case 10 kilo ampere for this and adding this for example so this is how the fault level is is is, is working and there is a uh, real time calculation and software to calculate this so this is example of uh, uh, short circuit levels and normally if you want to just for your information if uh, if you if for example in this case they want to connect with the main network to have a stability but uh, because uh, for example this bus part has a for short circuit capacity of 10 kilo amperes only for 3 seconds 10 kilo ampere for 3 seconds and if you want to connect because there are a lot of power available in the national grid because from hydro or any source which is cheaper if you want to connect it it is not possible because if there is a fault this bus power will simply melt up and 
uh, the, all the uh, breaker will not enough a breaker uh, breaking capacity is not enough to open the breaker and the, it will damage all the systems so what is the solution solution could be here introduce uh, hvdc back to back here for example in, in, uh, including hvdc substation here so the advantage of hvdc substation is kind it is basically uh, not allowing the short circuit level of the connect interconnected networks to travel so all the level will remain here you can transmit the power from here to here through hvdc but still the fault level of this network will not increase so this is the advantage and also for example now that another example that i have to give you is uh, in this case if uh, a transformer is uh, under maintenance if one transformer is under maintenance this is open the fault level because now it's fed by two generators the fault level will come down so fault level is also of any system is keep on changing depending on how many number of sources are feeding the system so this is a little introduction about the uh, short circuit capa uh, capacity and how short circuit capacity is changing and next topic is uh, voltage drop uh, we will discuss now this uh, next topic. Uh, so voltage drop in uh, has a very simple formula that voltage drop by Ohm's law can be defined as V is equal to I into R. So this is the formula for uh, voltage drop. For example, now uh, can, we will consider our case here that we have a source we will take an AC source and we want to supply a load this is the load ok and for example this is 100 volt is basically the supply volt just for ease 1 ohm is basically the resistance uh, for example 10 ohm is uh, load here uh, but uh, and this is the conductor which is connecting the load to generator uh, in our calculation normally we are taking it as a super or ideal conductor which has zero resistance but practically each conductor has resistance so let's take that the resistance of this conductor is for example it's a very long conductor the resistance of the conductor is 5 uh, ohms so the resistance of conductor is 5 ohms so it means the current here will be if we are considering that there is a zero resistance of conductor the ampere will be kind of V is equal to IR so I is equal to V O over R so here V is 100 R is 10 so ampere will be 10 amperes so if we consider that uh, mm, this is a zero resistance of the supplying and heats the voltage at the supplying end this is the Vs we can write it as a Vs and this is VR receiving end where the load is connected at terminals of the load for example both are equal so here voltage drop uh, will be zero so here voltage are 100 at this and supply and voltage uh, is 100 volts and because the resistance is zero here so receiving and at the terminal load voltages are also 100 so voltage drop is basically zero which is then ideal case but practically we'll select the practical case now practically there will be uh, resistance of the cable considering this is a very long uh, cable we'll take it as 
one ohm is for example is the resistance of the cable so now the current here will be uh, the i will be equal to by ohms law if we calculate will be 100 okay divided by 11 10 plus 1 because both are in series 11 so it will be kind of 100 divided by 11 so it will be kind of 9 amperes so to be precise 9.1 but let's take for simplification as 9 amperes so now current here is flowing is 9 ampere so this uh, loop also has some kind of resistance so if we calculate the voltage drop across 1 ohm V it will be equal to voltage drop across 1 ohm resistance will be equal to I into R and that will be equal to 9 ampere into 1 so 9 volts will be dropped and the terminal voltage will be 100 minus 991 volts 91 volts will be available at the load and sup where supply voltage are 100 so it means here what is the percentage voltage drop here will be 9 percent for example so percentage voltage drop here will be 9 percent so voltage are down 9 percent voltages are down so this is how we uh, this is the concept of voltage drop and percentage voltage drop allowable uh, but the thing is all the electrical devices when they are designed or when they are manufactured they are giving a rated voltage for the device so it could be like in for example in this case could be like 100 volt is a rated volt and allowable voltage variation or in this one could be like 10 percent okay so it means this device can work without getting damage at 110 volts plus and minus 10 means it 90 volts so as per the design uh, normally safety margin uh, is kept so we select here allowable voltage drop at for example 5 percent because of safety margin so as per this because equipment can bear 10 percent fluctuation and there could be fluctuation also in the supply so we we targeting the voltage drop for 5 percent only so 91 is not allowable as per our design limit so what we can do we can uh, increase the cross section area now we choose a uh, thicker cable so this is the new weak size of the cable and the resistance for example in this case is reduced to instead of 1 ohm to the new resistance is 0.5 uh, ohms so new resistance is kind of 0.5 ohms so the new resistance is 0.5 ohms so the new we have chosen a conductor which has more cross-section area it means the cross-section area is increasing the resistance will decrease so the resistance is 0.5 ohms now the new V will be equal to the ampere will be equal to 100 kind of 100 divided by 10.5 so ampere will be equal to 9.52 ohms and in that case if you multiply it by in that case now into 0.5 0 0.5 um, so the ampere is the new ampere is 4.7 the voltage drop is new voltage drop is like 0 0.76 ohms so new voltage drop is 
seven six ohms so the supply and voltage will remain same and the new voltage that will appear at the load will be kind of minus hundred ninety five point two three so it will be after changing the conductor to ninety five point two three so uh, this one is basically within the limits so this is the concept of voltage drop and we will do a detailed calculations and uh, in this calculation we will uh, select the conductor properly so I have shown you what is the voltage drop how voltage drops are calculated uh, I have shown you and the another topic just I add that maybe some people want to know is phase to phase and phase to ground voltages so let's uh, discuss this uh, briefly so we will discuss uh, now what is uh, phase to phase uh, voltage and that is called as line voltages uh, like phase to phase are called as line voltages whereas phase to ground uh, voltages are called as uh, 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 phase to ground voltages or uh, voltage with neutral so just uh, take an example here that if we have a three phase power supply so we have red yellow and blue there is a generator and that is feeding three phase power supply for example this is red this is yellow this is blue and this is neutral this is neutral so uh, if you put a voltmeter and if you measure voltages between two phases basically two wires that are live at some potential this voltage will be called as V line line voltages and if you put the voltmeter between any phase and neutral it will called as phase voltages uh, we can write it by VP now if this generator is producing 100 volts for example it's supplying 100 volts so there will be 100 volts here and if you put and if you measure the voltages between two phases it will be 100 into 1.732 line voltage will be 173 the measurement will be 173 and if in the measure because this uh, neutrally that's zero potential and if you measure zero with respect to 100 then it will be showing 100 volts so a uh, very small question that here 100 and here is also 100 then why voltmeter is not showing uh, 200 so there is a very small question so this I keep you for uh, your uh, assignment uh, but uh, in I am producing a course in which uh, I will be showing you uh, how three phase vectors are working and, and, and in detail star delta transform uh, star delta circuits and star delta transformations and how the line and phase voltages are working because uh, I will just give you just for um, curiosity and just let me explain you that uh, this is 100 and this is 100 so both are 100 so if you put a, a voltmeter if uh, both are uh, having because this is an AC quantity and AC quantity is uh, at, at uh, phase because if for uh, uh, technically if uh, both are have the same potential the voltage should be zero this is basically the concept here potential is 100 here potential is zero so okay 100 minus zero is equal to 100 and 100 here is 100 and here is 100 but still we are getting some volt it should be v1 minus v2 zero volt because the reason is it's a phasor quantity so all voltages are displaced by 120 degrees so this is the displacement all vectors are displaced by 120 degrees for example this is and the phases are rotating 
anti-clockwise red yellow and blue so if you want to uh, do the measurement between these two you have to shift this phaser here this one minus this one so it will come here and then this will be the voltage that the voltmeter will read this will be the voltages so it will be 1.73 times the any voltage so basically this is the example of uh, v line and v phase voltages please uh, you can uh, keep uh, tracking my courses so uh, very near i will be launching course which is explaining these basic circuits and it will i will explain in a very simple way that you can really understand well so thank you very much uh, for this session go to the next section